Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're continuing with our tour of this demo app called Authy that I have built and put out on GitHub. Uh, you don't need to have seen past videos. The GitHub repo is down below if you do want to get the code and try to follow along on your own. Uh, if you want to run it, there's a, a one requisite video, prerequisite video you need to watch, which just hooks it up to a, a Firebase backend. I'll put a link to that up above. But we talked about all these different steps that had to go to have to, have to happen uh, in your app. And this one, in this video, I'd like to focus on form validation or start to focus on form validation. So in the case of Firebase and, and really in the case of any backend, authentication is going to have a, a minimum requirement. So for example, if you're signing up with email and password for Firebase, it has to be a valid email format. It doesn't have to be a real email, but it has to be in the right format. Uh, the password has to be at least six characters. If you're sending a phone number, that needs to be in a valid format. So th there's really no use in sending on the user information if you haven't met those basic standards. And it's probably not a good user experience to allow them to do that. You should uh, give them some kind of feedback if they aren't meeting the minimum standards before they send it off to the server for authentication. And so we definitely want to do form validation in this one here, that's, uh, let's go to sign up. Uh, in this, this app here, so for sign up, when I signed up, it, it has to be a valid email address or I'm going to get this message that it's, it's invalid. Um, I need to have an eight character minimum before I can go on and my passwords need to match. I need to confirm it and if they don't match, uh, I'm going to get some some negative feedback here or helpful feedback, however you look at it, uh, to get those values right. So this is accomplished in this app with RxDart. That's one of my favorite tools for validation because it is reactive and it is so flexible. Uh, RxDart is just really uh, Dart streams super size. I mean, there's just more features that you can bolt onto uh, your typical Dart streams. You can kind of think of them as as streams, if as conveyor belts. You're you're feeding information into the stream, and that information could, if you wanted it to, could just go sliding on down into a variable, into an output widget, whatever you want to do with it. You can also, and we would want to in this application, introduce a transformer in the middle. And in the case of, say, email validation, we would get it to the transformer. It would probably look at some regular expression. And if it passes, it might let it pass through to the new variable value. And if it doesn't, we would want to take some action. And in, in the case of this kind of validation, we would want to pass uh, a text string out to an error receiver, which we can connect to the text fields uh, input decoration as an error and a feedback to the user. So that works really well for validating uh, individual fields. You can write whatever you want here in the transformer. Where it really becomes great is down here on the sign up button. You'll notice this sign up button does not light up and become valid until all three of these are valid. And so not only can you pass information into an RX Dart stream, you can pass other streams. And so in the example of this one, we can take the email stream that we have hooked to this field, we can take the password stream that we have hooked to this one and the confirm password, and we can actually pass those streams. And we can tell the transformer, uh, if those all have values, don't, don't pass through the password and the email and the, all that. We don't need that information. Throw out a Boolean. And if this button ever sees a true come out of its stream, then it's going to light up and become valid. So we're not limited to just stopping information and potentially throwing an error. We can actually stop it and allow something else through or throw out anything out this right side that we want. So really, really powerful, and that's why I like RxDart for this function. All right, so flipping over to the code here for a quick tour, you can first of all see in PubSpec YAML that I have RxDart here. Uh, I also have Provider mixed in. I have uh, created a blocks folder in SRC, and I have an authblock.dart class. That is going to hold my business logic. 
And in app.dart, which is in uh, the root of the SRC folder, I have a provider set up where I am passing in a, a single instance of that auth block that I can access anywhere in my widget tree. So in the auth block class itself, in order to make this, this email work, um, the first thing I need is I need a, a stream, a private stream. Uh, so I have a final underscore email. It's a behavior subject of type string, and behavior subject is a special kind of stream in RxDart. Uh, the advantage of it is that it will cache the last value that you pass through the stream. And so that comes in real handy when you go to uh, submit a form, which we'll do at a later date. Everything that gets typed into this text field gets dumped into this email stream, even if it's invalid. So this is kind of the base stream uh, for this whole process. Going a little further down, I have a getter section, and I have a getter called email without an underscore, and that is the public access, so that is the views access to this stream, and you can see it amounts to the private stream with uh, the stream property off of that. And we're also transforming it with a function called validate email. So validate email is down below that. We'll, we'll visit that in a second. That is the logic that I use to transform uh, this private stream into this public one that I pass out. Little, little further down is the setter section, and I have got a public getter that gives me access to a function called change email, into which I can pass a string. I can take that string and dump it right into the sync of my uh, private email stream. So every time somebody types in this text field, the change email function is called with the value from the text field, and it gets dumped into the sync. All right, so lastly, a little further down, I've got a validator section, and the third one down is validate email. This is boilerplate stream transformer language up here. I'm passing in a string, I'm getting out a string, I'm handling data, and I'm going to call the string that I'm handling email, and I need to, to label the sync, which I'm just gonna call sync. And this function right here is the custom function I write to validate that email. Uh, if it matches the regular expression email, which I have all the way up here, that is valid. Where are we? That's valid, so I am going to add that value to the sync. Otherwise, I am going to add valid email required to the add error property of the sync. So that means in my public getter up here, uh, after I have transformed the private email stream, I may get a value back in this email property here, but I may also get an error. So that's one of the nice things we can grab onto this behavior subject stream and we can get a dual stream of an error or a value and we can point each one of those at a different place in the UI. So looking over at the UI, so I've got a screens folder. This page is sign up email, which has some listeners up top. Once you get down to the build function, I have pretty much just got a column of text fields and buttons, each one wrapped with a stream builder. And so this one right here is the stream builder that is building this email text field right here. This is just a normal text field. I have uh, created my own little text field with some styles, so that's down in the widget folder. Uh, but it's just a standard text field. There is no form here. I don't need a form because all the validation is being handled by the block. I'm not actually triggering anything. The trigger is every time somebody types. Uh, if you want to have a more traditional type of validation where somebody hits submit and there is a validation process after they submit it. Uh, for that, you need a form, but if you're looking to be reactive, uh, all you need is a text field. Uh, so my stream builder here, you can see, is this public email property that we just talked about that has that dual 
a stream of an error property and also a value property. So anytime there's an update there, uh, I want this to rebuild. Every time the text field changes, as I said, I'm feeding that change email and the value is going into it and I don't actually have to say, you know, name a value and pass it in there. Uh, that is just all implied with change email. And then lastly, I have an error text property and that I am pulling the error off of the snapshot. So from this authblock.email stream, uh, you'll notice we're not actually getting the value from this stream. We don't really care. Every time we type, uh, we are changing that stream uh, to that value. So if it is valid, we know it matches what's here in the text field. Uh, this error text property is mapped to the input decoration on the text field in, you'll see that in the widgets folder here in the text field. And so if there is an error, then it passes it to the decoration and it will become uh, red and prompt you to fix the invalid email. All right, so password is doing the exact same thing in the background. The only difference there, instead of a regular expression, I am saying it needs to be at least eight characters. And then confirm password actually works a little bit differently. If we look back here in the auth block, uh, for the getter, instead of transforming, I have a do on data, which allows me to take the value from uh, the stream and I'm going to compare it to the password value and if it doesn't match I'm going to pass an error through and then down here on the sign up button you'll notice in the sign up email the button is wrapped with a stream builder that is listening to is email sign up valid which is right here in the auth block in the getter section. There is no private variable declared for this. There is no setter. Uh, that is not needed. All we need to do is get back a value from this stream, which combines other streams. Uh, so this is taking advantage of something called combine latest stream and RX start right here. You can tell it how many streams you're looking to combine. And I have told it three and I have fed it the public email password and confirm password. So if email is invalid like this is here, this is going to be nothing. So this will not compute unless all three are something. So all three have to be valid. And then I have put this additional term on it that password when compared to combined password should be the same. So this compared to has to equal zero. Uh, and in that case, it is going to pass out a true value. I don't have to actually say true because I'm doing an expression here which will return true if the left side equals the right. And in my sign up email, if that equals true, then the button is enabled. Like that. And so that is how you can take care of this initial form validation so that when you hit sign up or when you hit login, uh, you aren't sending information off to the server that is has no chance of being valid there. Hope you found that helpful. I know this is uh, a little bit different. If you have questions, please feel free to, to put them down below. We can always circle back to stuff. Uh, if there's something I'm doing here that you think could be a little bit better, uh, please feel free to let me know. We're experimenting with a new format to cover uh, some more serious topics in a shorter amount of time. That's the goal. We'll see if we get there. All right. So next time we're going to look at actually passing off the authentication to the server for this sign up with email and password or login with email and password. Uh, hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Take care.